Thank everybody for coming and being part of this lecture. This is lecture number three that we will be doing. And this is on complex numbers. This is for engineering math. Today is Thursday, January 25th, 2018. Okay, we're going to begin with complex numbers. Complex numbers is something we should, that we will be dealing with on a continual basis. We've dealt with complex numbers in the past with algebra, and so now we are going to deal with it in, as it relates to calculus, as it relates to differentiation, as it relates to other areas. Okay? Um, complex numbers are used in many ways. It's used in physics, it's used in chemistry, engineering, as well as in mathematics. Now, when we talk about complex numbers, we're talking about polynomials. Okay, let's look at the complex numbers that we have before us. Before us, we have x squared minus 4x plus 5 equals 0. The general form that this um, a polynomial takes is a times x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And so now we would like to find out what are the roots of x. And so what we do is we plug in for b minus 4. For a, we plug in 1. For c, we plug in 5. And as we said before, for a, we plug in 1. Okay, when we take this specific problem and we put it into our formula, which is called the quadratic formula, it's for quadratic equations, we will find that we will have a problem. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, so as I said, we're plugging in 1 for A, minus 4 for B, and 5 for C. So we're just going to look at the first row here. Look at, break this down, look at what's inside of the, what's inside of the square root sign. And so what we have is B squared minus 4AC. And so for B, we're plugging in a minus 4, and we're going to square it. Then we're going to take, um, subtract 4, then multiply that times A, which is 1. Then we're going to multiply C, which is 5. Okay? When we multiply, and we're going to take the square root of this, we take four, negative 4 squared, we get 16. If we multiply 4 times 1, we get 4. And we multiply 4 times 5, we get 20. And we have all of that under the square root. So, we have 20 is greater than 16, so this would be a minus 4 under the square root. So, because we have a minus number under the square root, we're going to use I, or we some places use J, I'm using J here, that this is going to stand for the square root of a negative 1. Okay? I'll say that again. It's going to stand for the square root of a negative 1. Okay. So, the next thing that we're going to look at is if we take the square root of 4, we get 2, so we get um, 2j. Then we're going to look at the complete top line. And what we see is we left out the minus b outside the parenthesis, so then we're also using plus and minus. 
this um, this square root. So we have two parts to it. We're going to have a minus four, which is this b here, minus, we just had a 2j, minus 2j, so that's one root. Okay? And then what we have, another root, which is going to be 4 minus 2j. Okay, remember there was a, a minus in front of this b, and there was a minus in front of this 4, so it turned it into positive. And so now we have two roots. Okay, and then now we look at a. a is a 1, so we're going to 2 times 1 is 2. So at the bottom, we're dividing by 2. And so if we divide 4 minus 2j by 2, we get 2 plus j for this term with the plus sign. And then with the minus sign, we're going to get um, 2 minus j. Okay? So when we talk about complex number, we're combining it's the combination of real and imaginary numbers. It shows up a lot, as I mentioned to you in engineering. And specifically in engineering, we talk about control systems, system modeling, advanced fluid mechanics, alternating current analysis, power systems, electronics, signals, communication, optics, and optical engineering. Power systems everywhere we have it. Okay, so what would we like to do now? Well, what we would like to do is make some applications to this. Okay, so if we want to plot this point, our x-axis is, is going to be, our x is going to be our 3. So we go over 1, 2, 3. And our y-axis is our imaginary, so we're going to go up for 1, 2, 3, 4. So the point that we're looking at is here, okay? Now, what we want to do is also be able to take the conjugate. When we talk about the conjugate, we have usually a star over it or, or next to it, or we have a line over it. There's different forms that they have for that. And so the conjugate is that you do not change the real component. You only change, and you don't change the magnet, the, um, the number of the imaginary number, all we're doing is changing the sign in imaginary number. So that when we multiply these two together, we're going to get a real number. We're going to get 3 times 3 is 9, and 4 times 4 is 16, and plus you have a, but this is a, my, and you'll get i squared. <clears throat> the i squared is a negative 1 times the negative 1 gives you a positive, so this will be a positive 16. Okay, so when we talk about polar coordinates, that was Cartesian coordinates or rectangular coordinates. Now when we talk about Euler's method and we talk about polar coordinates, we're going to be dealing with what we call R, the hypotenuse from the center, from the origin, is going to be R and it will be multiplied times the cosine of the angle of where it will intersect. And so we'll look at absolute value also. When we talk about the absolute value, we're talking about the same thing. The absolute value is finding the, um, we can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or a squared plus b squared, the square root of that equals c or equals what we call r, or the hypotenuse of our angle, of our triangle, okay? And so we're going to be calling that the absolute value or the magnitude. And this is how we will mas Okay. What we are going to look at now is we're going to um, look at can we plot this point. 
okay? I don't have, um, I don't think they allow me to use pin in here. So I'll be using my pointer to give you the points of where everything is. So we're going to use two. The diagonal will be two. And we will go three pi over two. Okay, so when we talk about three pi over two, okay, this is pi, this is two pi, and so if we want to go back one half, and so we'll be at 270 degrees, which would be right here. Okay, now if we're looking at the square root of two, Okay, so you saw this is on the um, axis of the y-axis. There is no um, x component to this particular plot that we're looking at here for this value. Now, when we look here, we're looking at the square root of 4. Okay, and when we look at the square root of 4, that's we have... 360 degrees complete, then we have 180, which is 1 pi, then we have half of a pi, which is 90 degrees, and then we have 1 fourth of a pi, which is 45 degrees. So this here will be at 45 degree, and R, or our hypotenuse, at 45 degree will be the square root of 2. Now we're going to do this again. And what we're going to find here is that we have n that's going to vary. It's an integer. It'll vary. But what we are going to do is we're going to look at, we, we can see here that this is going to be where? A 2 is going to be our um, distance our on our partners. And so what we see here is that it's going to be a pi, 2 pi. We said 2 pi is 360 degree. That makes a complete circle. Okay. And if we plug in 0 for n. Okay. If we plug in 0 for n. We have 1 half of 2 pi. Which is 1 pi. So basically what we're going to have is. Here. And we're going to have it go up 2. And this is going to be the point. It's not going to have any y component. It's only going to have an x component which is here. Okay, now it says that we're going to increase n from 1 to infinity. So if we had it at 0, we saw it was a half a pi. Now when we put in 1, we still going to go what? We're going to add 2 pi to it. So we're going to be still here at a half a pi, and then we're going to go over twice. We're going to go 2 pi, and down we wind up at the same point. So we'll constantly keep winding up at the same point every time at n. So that's what this equation is telling us. Okay. Ways to express complex numbers. Okay, we looked at the polar coordinates. We looked at the rectangular coordinates, the Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so now we're looking at all of them together. So if we have z... And we have our x and our y, and our y will be the imaginary component. We can convert it to the polar coordinates, and then we can pull it to exponential coordinates. And so as you can see here, that we had mentioned this was r, or which we call the hypotenuse, and then it has its angle. And the angle is going to give us a cosine and a sine. And the cosine is adjacent of the angle and the sine is the opposite of the angle. So the sine will be dealing with the y component, which you can see here. The y component deals with the sine and the cosine component deals with the x component. Okay, so we're going to put it in shorthand notation that we have the r out front and now we're going to represent e as it represents the cosine plus uh, i the imaginary part of the sine. And so we'll take that to I to that particular angle. And so we'll also represent it as R with the angle, or we'll represent it as X 
and why. Ordinary rules. I is exactly like a variable. Okay, we'll be treating it like a variable. As an example, we have here x plus i y, and now we're using what it, notice this what we're doing. The only difference between these two is the minus sign. So this is called the what? The conjugate. Yes, you are correct. So with here with this conjugate times its original polynomial, our equation, original function. So when we multiply it together, we're going to get a whole number. And so that's the same thing. So when we have this fraction, we can't do anything with the fraction with a imaginary number on the bottom. So we have to find the conjugate and multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate so that we can get what? So that we can get a real number on the bottom and we'll just have the imaginary term and the real term on top. Okay, so how would we do this for this example? So for this specific example, you can do it on your own, and now you can come back and see how I do it. Check your answer. You can check all of these before you look at my answers. <clears throat> so when we multiply this, we're using the FOIL method, x times x is x squared, x times minus i y gives us a minus j x y then we multiply i y times x and we get a positive x y j and then we multiply i j times a minus i j and the minus times a minus is a minus and so we get a j and we get a y squared okay this should be corrected. This should be here, a j squared and a y squared. Both of these are squared. Okay, when we, when we equal this, we'll find this as x squared plus j squared times y squared, which is this component here. And so when we multiply we'll have a negative j, I mean j, a negative j squared is a negative one. So if we multiply a negative one times a negative one, we should get a positive one. Okay, so we should get a positive, and so this should be y squared a plus y squared, not a negative y squared, as we see this here. What we see here is that the minus j x y and the plus x j y is going to cancel out. So these two terms will cancel out, and the only two terms that we have left is these two terms, your x squared and your y squared. So this always happens. So as an example, they call this the perfect square. Okay, so when we have an example with numbers in it now, we should be able to hopefully get this corrected. So you have 2 plus 2j all divided by 3 minus j. And so what I did was take the conjugate. And to do that, you have to put the conjugate over the conjugate because you're going to just multiply. Basically, you're not changing the equation. All you're doing is multiplying by 1. If you put the same um, for, um, fraction, the same function over top of itself, it equals one. Okay, so you so this you haven't changed anything here. All you did was transform it. So when you do your multiplication here, your two times your three, you get your six. Your two times your j, you get two j. Your two j times your three, you get six j. Your two j times your j, you get two j squared. Okay, and when you get this, 2j, now need to be do the bottom. When you multiply 3 times 3, you get 9. 3 times j, the j's parts will cancel out, and the only thing that you're going to have left is a minus j times a plus j is a minus j squared. Okay, and we know that a j squared 
is a negative one. A negative one times a negative is a positive. So we have nine plus one. Okay, now what we do next is that we have the six and we have here the 2j and the 6j will give us 8j, grouping terms like terms together. We see here we have a 2 and we have a j. Okay, we have a j squared. So the j squared means that it's going to be what? Negative 1. So we're going to multiply negative 1 times 2 and we get negative 2. So as we can see here, this will read, this should read a minus two minus six, it gives me four J. So, I mean, it gives me four two, a negative two plus six gives me four. And we have here the J's we are adding together, the six J and the two J, we get eight J. So we have 10 on the bottom and we have two, I mean four plus eight J. So we can divide all of this by two. So if we divide 10 by two, we get five on the bottom. If we divide four by two, we get two. If we divide eight by two, we get four. So this is our solution. Okay, next, we go to the next we're going to be looking at how do we multiply and divide complex numbers using complex algebra. So what we would like for you to do or learn is that notice the terms will only multiply the numbers that are out front in front of the exponential. These real numbers, we just multiply them times each other and the exponential we add together if we're multiplying two functions together. Then if we're dividing these functions, we divide these numbers, the R1 and the R2, over each other, but we will be subtracting the angles, okay, in the exponential. And so, we would like for you to try this, these examples at this time. And when we come back, we will, our next slide, we will show you how to, that, how to do the steps. Okay, so for this particular example, we're going to use 3e i pi times 2e to the i pi over 2. Okay, so one of our rules that we learned, we multiply these two numbers together, the 3 and the 2, we get 6, the coefficients that are out front. Then we just add the what? Ex exponents. So we move outside the j and we say pi plus pi over 2 equals 3 pi over 2. So this is very simple. 6 where e is raised to the j 3 pi over 2. Now we're going to look at this next example. It'll be a little more complicated. So. This is the example that we would like to look at. And so the first thing we need to do is to convert to the component to the exponential form, because that's what we're trying to do. So the first thing we have to do is that we need to find R. How do we find R? We find R by taking X squared plus Y squared all over the square root. And one plus one equals two, the square root of two is what R is for this problem to convert this particular function. Okay, then, okay, so we can also find it another way by multiplying the conjugates times each other. So the other way is we have the actual function and then we take the conjugate and we, then we take the square root of it. So if we take the conjugate of this, we will find 1 plus 1 again, and it will give us 2, and we're taking the square root of that, so we get the same thing, 2 times the square root of, raised to the square root. Okay, now we need the angle. Okay, we take the arctangent 
of y over x, the arctangent of 1 over 1 is 45 degrees. And so what we have here is that we have 1 plus j equals 2 raised it's the square root of 2 times the cosine of 45 plus j, the sine of 45 degrees. Okay? Then we can also use it in the exponential form, which we now have it in. Now, we can take what our original problem was, 2 times the square root of 2, 2, the square root of 2 times e to the j pi over 3. This function is divided by the square root of 2 times e to the j pi over 4. So how do we do that? If we multiply the square root of 2, if, if we divide the square root of 2 by the square root of 2, we get 1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the exponents because we're dividing now. And so when we divide, what we're going to do is we have j pi over 3 minus j pi over 4 equals, okay? When we combine these two, we have to find the common denominator. The common denominator would be 12. 3 times 4 would be 12. When you go to the top, you add them, so and that would give you 7. So it would be 7. So the answer would be e to the power of j pi at 7 Okay, so now we'll go to the next example. Okay, simplify as needed. Turn into two equations. Okay, so what we are looking here, we want to look at, is we would like to let you know that what becomes A and what becomes B and what becomes C. So as you can see from this equation here, A is equal to C, the real part, on both sides. The imaginary part is a B and a D. Example that we're given, we'll find x and y. The real part of this equation is 5, so x equals 5, and the imaginary part of this is y, so y equals a minus 2. Not a 2, a minus 2. Okay. All right, so now we would like to do the same thing for the next, the next one. We want you to practice this at home. Okay, so as you can see here, we have what? x plus 5 and x and 2, y equals minus 2. Now, how do we work with this? This is the square root. So we square both sides of the equation. Square both sides. So if we square this, this turns into x plus ij. The square root of that disappears. And what do we have on the other side? Then we're going to take the square of this, which is 2 plus j. We square that, we get 4 plus 2j plus 2j plus j squared. And so the j squared is a negative 1. The 2j plus the 2j will give me a 4j. Okay? And then 4 minus 1 gives me 3. So I have 3 plus j4. So with this, my x is my real component, which is 3. My y is my imaginary component, which is my 4. Okay, now we would like to get, see if you're learning this, if this is working out for you. Express this equation, 3 minus 3i divided by 3 minus 1i in the um, rectangular coordinates. And then we would like for you to find also the absolute value of this particular um, function. This um, 4 plus 3i divided by 2i minus 1. So when you do it, then come back and look at our answers. Okay, so the first thing we'd like to do is multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. 
Okay, so the um, 3i minus 1, the conjugate of this, remember the conjugate, you do, do not change the real number, which is a negative 1, you're only changing the sign on the imaginary number. It was a plus 3, now we're making a minus 3j. So when we multiply these two together, times the conjugate, you're going to get a real number. So as we can see here, we're going to get a minus 3, 3 times 3 gives you a minus 3. As we have here, then you have a 3 times 3j is going to give you a negative 9j. Then you're going to multiply your negative 3j using your FOIL method times your minus 1, and it's going to give you a positive 3j. Then you're going to multiply your minus 3j times your minus 3j. This, as you can see, these middle terms drop out. The minus j9 will drop out. No, 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 it won't drop out. Okay. Right, okay, because this is the top. On the bottom, they're going to drop out. Up here at the top, they don't drop out because this is not the conjugate of this. Okay, so what we have here is we're going to buy, combine the minus 9j and the 3j. And what we'll find out is the minus 3j and the 3j equals a minus 6j. Then we find out here that we have um, 9 and you have a j squared, so that's a negative 9. This is going to give you a negative 9 plus a minus 3 gives you a negative 12. So we have a minus 12 minus 6j on the top. Now on the bottom, like I said, we're going to be using the conjugate, and this is the conjugate times itself. So what we should be looking at is we will see these two terms squared, which will give us 1, as you can see here. This last term squared will give us a 9j squared, and these middle terms drop out, the plus 3j and the minus 3j. So what we have here is um, a, a j squared, so that gives me a minus 9, plus 1 gives me a minus 8. And so what that means here is that we have what we have from the top, which we want to divide. We have a minus 12 and a minus 6j on the top. And on the bottom, we have a whole number. The whole number is minus 8. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the, we're going to divide by, guess what? We're going to divide by 2, because everything can be divided by 2. So if you divide the denominator, the bottom one by 2, you get 4, minus 4. If you divide the top, you get a minus 12, and then you get a minus 3. Okay, we'll move on to the next problem. Hopefully you got that correct. Okay, find the absolute value of 4 plus 3i over 2i minus 1. First, find the conjugate at the top. We talked about this before. All right. Okay, so this one is going to be a little different because you're going to, they want the absolute value. So the absolute value is you have to multiply the conjugate of the top times itself and the conjugate of the bottom times itself. And so let's do the conjugate of the top by itself. This is 4 minus 3j because the original one is 4 plus 3j. When we multiply this out, we get 16, which is the two fours. You should see this pattern by now, and you get 9, okay? And you should see that pattern by now. So this j is going to be a negative times a negative. It's going to turn it to a positive. And so what you have the square root of 25, which equals 5, okay? Then we find the conjugate of the one on the bottom, okay? The number is originally um, A minus 1 plus 2j and so the conjugate is we're just changing the imaginary part so it's still a minus 1 minus 2j 
And so when we multiply them out together, we should get perfect square. We should get a 1, and we should get a 4. Okay? And this is plus or minus. So if we add the 2 together, we get 5 over the square root. So this is the square root of 5. So when we divide the two together, we have five on the top and the square root of five on the bottom. We get, we can cancel out and we can get the answer is the square root of five. I hope you're doing very well in this class. I hope some of this is that you're understanding it and like I said, work the problems. We're spending most of our time just working problems, making sure you understand the application. Convert the following numbers to a to rectangular coordinate form. Okay, that's what we'll call it, rectangular, and we'll call the other one um, polar. Okay, and plot the complex plane in the complex plane. So, what we will have you do, we would like for you to go and convert this one that's in polar coordinates or in exponential form and put it there. And we would like to take the one that we have here, so that's divided. And you cannot have an imaginary number on the bottom, so we need to clean this up. So, take your time and get the answers. And then when you're ready, come click and you'll see the answers. Okay, so the first thing that we would like to do is that we see here, this lets us know that 4 is equal to R. That's the number that's out front. And so the form is... That, and it tells us that this is pi over 3. Okay. And so the new form is 4 parenthesis times the cosine of pi over 3 plus the imaginary part, the j, of the sine of pi over 3. And the same thing as pi over 3 is 60 degrees for the sine and the cosine. And when we take the cosine of 60 degrees, we get 1 half. When we take the sine of 60 degrees, we get 0.866. When we multiply four times one half, we get two. We multiply four times 0.866, we get 3.467. So we pray, we hope that you are doing well. Now let's look at this next one. Convert the following number to um, rectangular form and then plot the location. And as you saw before, we will. you can easily plot this. This is not complicated. Okay, so what we would like to do is first find the Cartesian coordinates, I mean the conjugate of the bottom number, okay, because that we can't have this on the bottom. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just change the i, and so it's still going to be a negative 1, and we have now the minus j, which is going to be multiplied times minus j, minus 1 plus j. And so this will give us 1 plus 1, which is going to give us 2. So that's what the conjugate gives us. Okay, so now we multiply the conjugate by the top number so that what you put what you do on the top, you must do on the bottom. Or what you do on the bottom, we must multiply top because we're just multiplying by one. Okay, so what we do here is we multiply this. Okay, four times this number. Okay, so what happens is when you get four times this, and you're only dividing by 2, basically the 2 divides into the 4, and so basically what you have is 2, a minus 2, minus a 2j. Okay, and how would you plot that? You plot that by going over 2, minus 2, 1, 2, and going down 2. So this would be one, two, this would be the point that it would be at. Okay? We'd like for you to convert this. Okay? And now we're gonna solve it. Solve it on your own, and then come and take a look at the answer. Okay, so we're going to solve this problem. Okay? So we have x plus i y is equal to 3i minus ix. Okay. So we want to solve this.
Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to convert this number here, which is 1 plus i over 1 plus i into our r, the form that we need this in. And the form that we need this in Okay, this is problem number four. Let me see. I think, think I jumped ahead. Okay, so if we're going to convert this number into um, our um, exponential form, the first thing we do is we convert the top the numerator of 1 plus j into, what, what do we find? We need to find r first. So there's two ways we can find r. We can find r by multiplying times the conjugate, which we do here, and we get the square root of 2 all over the square root, or we can just do a squared plus b squared, the square root of that, which is 1 plus 1. Either way, we get the same answer square root of 2. Now we need the angle. Okay, so how do we find the angle? We have the arctangent, and the arctangent gives us of the arctangent of 1. We saw this before as a 45 degrees. Okay, at this point, now we can say that we have converted it into this format. Square root of 2 is out front, and the cosine of 45 degrees plus j sine 45 degrees and now we can convert that to the r which is out front and then we have our angle which is j pi over 4 is each raised to that exponential so we repeat the same thing for the 1 minus j but this is in the third what sector or the third um, coordinate system, okay? So, what we have here, so the angle is not 45 degrees because it is not two pluses, it's a plus and a minus. That means it's in the third quadrant, okay? The first quadrant is plus, plus. You have x is plus, y is plus. We move to the second quadrant. We have x is negative and y is positive. That's not what we have here. We move to the third quadrant. Then we have x as negative and y as negative, and we don't have that because we have x as positive. And then we move to the fourth quadrant. Sorry, not the third quadrant. We move to the fourth quadrant. When we move to the fourth quadrant, what we find here is that we have x is positive and j is negative. So we're moving it to the fourth quadrant. Okay, sorry for that mistake there. So, the angle is not 45 degrees, but now we're going to add to it 270 degrees so that we can actually get into the fourth quadrant. So, 45 plus 270 equals 360 degrees, or it says at 7 pi divided by 4. So, when we put it in this format, we have our 2 times the square root of 2, 2 the square, root, the square root of 2, then we have e raised to the imaginary component, imaginary j, pi over 4, divided by the square root of 2 um, times e to the j, pi over 7 fourths. And so when we divide this, we just subtracting the um, exponentials, and we're dividing the two um, real numbers, the real components, and those go to 1. And so what we have, we're, we're subtracting 7, um, 7 fourth pi um, from 1 fourth pi. And so what we actually get is e to the uh, j pi times 6 fourths. We can reduce 6 fourths to 3 over 2. So the final answer is e raised to the j pi 3 half.
Well, we'd like to thank you for being part of our presentation. And so, we will see you again. Thank you for being part of our study.